here, unless you tell me otherwise. All right, find the mean, median, and mode of the values in the data set below, round to the nearest whole number. It would be good to put them in numerical order. Uh, so it looks like yeah. 38 is the smallest one. Then there's mm -hmm. two 39s. Notice I'm crossing them out as I go. Uh, next one looks like it's a 41, then a 42, and then three 44s. and then a 57, right? So you do that for the median. You don't need to do that for the uh, mean, but yeah. it does help for the mode as well. So the median is the middle number. There are one, two, there's nine. So it looks like it's 42. Yeah. What would the mode be? Uh, 44. 44, and then to find the average, are you allowed to use a calculator? Uh, no. No. Okay. I'm going to assume you can add these up and divide by yeah. the number of numbers. So let me do that for you. So we're not wasting time on, on that. Cause that's a lot to do. You would, you would want to, for example, pair up like 41 and 39 to make it faster. Um, yeah. But this is, this is a lot to, uh, to ask you to do. All right. So it ends up being 43 and one ninth, I don't know, round to the nearest. See how it says round, I guess you do, you can do it. We'll say 43. Yeah. And if you need that sum, well, I'll give you the sum there. That way you can show your work. It's 388 divided by nine, which is 43. Mm -hmm. Any questions? So four. All right. All right, identify the factors and coefficients in the expression y divided by 2. So the coefficient would be, or the factor would be 2, I mean, y. I think. Uh, yeah, the coefficient is for sure 1 half. Um, what I'm not sure of is why they're differentiating. Like the whole thing is... I don't want to say this. The whole thing exactly. is an expression. Why is the variable one half is the coefficient? I'm not sure what they mean by factors here. Um, I'm gonna check. It's because they have little. Um, yeah, check number two. Like it has the lesson. Yeah, go take a look and see if there is something that we can glean from that. That's. Yeah, it shows that, like, for example, in 4xy, the coefficient would be 4, and the factors would be x and y and 4. Yeah, so the, so the whole thing is a factor. So what we're okay. saying. And then the coefficient is, is 1 half. So the coefficient is always a number. The factor is, basically, factors are separated by <laughs> operators. So if, if I gave you, like, 1 half a b plus 3 x squared. These are both factors. Uh -huh. I think of them as terms. Yeah. So, you know, I'm, anyway, we're probably spending too much time on that. Let's, if you got that down, let's, let's uh, move on here. All right. Uh, any, any idea how to do this? This one, I feel like you probably have seen many times before. It's over seven. Yes. Nothing to do there. All right. Uh, so of course, six is much more difficult, meaning it's a lot more to do. Okay. All right. So we got, yeah. So when you distribute to the first term, I mean, that's why I call it a term. It's it's x squared y squared z over a b. So if they if they're the same in the top or the bottom, you have to increase the exponent. Uh -huh. In the second one here, you have a choice. 
you, you can see that the A's maybe cancel. I don't know if you like doing that. I would I would probably want to cancel. If you don't, we have to write it out and then cancel. What what would you do? Would you multiply in or would you start to cancel? I mean, yeah, I can cancel the A's, so it would just be three X or X squared and then Y. Yes, you got it. And then sometimes there's nothing, so it's X, Y, B squared over A. Uh -huh. And there's nothing, nothing else to do here. Yeah, simplest form. Okay. Right. Number seven, it says to square, square the given quantity. Mm -hmm. There's really a one above the eight as its exponent. So this two is really kind of almost distributed mm -hmm. to each exponent. Eight squared, you're multiplying. Maybe I'll make write that down here. X to the sixth, Y to the tenth. And then you do actually want to square the eight. So it's 64, X to the sixth, Y to the to the tenth there. Okay. Your distributes okay yeah yeah and just you know if, if if you're not sure i mean it goes to all of them it has to go to all of them let, let me know if you're ready to go to number eight yeah go ahead okay okay so factor factor means look at the numbers the three and the three, and and see what what is the biggest number that goes into both. Um, three, three, a, a to the second. Right, and then b. Yes, and then you're dividing each of these by that. Mm -hmm. I I found after showing this for a long time, I think it's better to do it this way, to show the division. So tell me what would go inside parentheses here. Um, so it would be um, b to the second minus um, a to the second. Yes, very good. All right, now the, the problem says completely they're sort of hinting that you might have to do more than one factoring. And, and you can here, this, this inside parentheses can be factored. It's called difference of squares. Have you heard of that before? Difference of squares? I don't think so, or maybe. <laughs> I'm asking, cause I mean, it's, it's kind of outside of the scope of this class, but well, you know, I don't, it's Saxon. So they might've introduced it early. Um, it ends up being B minus A b plus a so if, if you don't feel like you've seen that before maybe ask your teacher or go back and look at 38 and see if it says anything about difference of squares hey I, I am gonna look at the answer sheet real quick for this one maybe um because i'm not sure what it wants Oh, you were right, yeah. So it does want you to put B minus A and A plus B. There. Yeah, we, so I'm just gonna make a note here. Um, I'm just gonna circle it in red. I'm gonna circle the seven, because these are ones we might come back and do again, maybe even six, do some like it, but okay. Yeah, let's uh, go ahead and get that down and we'll move on to a new problem. Yeah. All right. All right. So number nine here, find the slope of the line. Uh, one of the things that's good to do is identify a point that's on the line for sure. Like, like, do you agree that there is a point at zero comma zero? Yeah. Now the, the, the next one's a little bit harder. I want to say there's one there at um, one comma two. It's hard to uh, see. Yeah, but, yeah, it is. But it, it really, like, you usually it has a grid behind it. 
Now, there's a couple ways to do slope. One is to actually use the slope formula. The second is to just use the graph, the rise over the run. And I would, I would probably use the graph. So since it's going up, it's a rise of two. It's going to the right one. That is your slope, two divided by one or, or just two. The slope would be two. Yeah. Right. Okay. And and you can you can use the points that I that I have here in the formula. That'll work out exactly the same. I mean it's two minus zero over one minus zero. It's still two over one. When you're given the graph, it's better to use rise over run. Yeah. But for example, number 10 does not give you a graph. It just says to find the slope. So this time you have to use the slope formula. Okay. Now, it, I think I think one of the things that may be unclear is why is there a two? Why is there a one? X two, X one. Has that been explained so, to you? Yeah, it's just kind of showing you which like X it is because there's two. That's exactly right. Yes, I like to label them, especially if I'm you know haven't done it in a while. Want to you know remind myself which one is which. Um, would you mind doing this one uh, for us, please? Let me know what you come up with. Uh -huh. Do you need to, um, do you need to like put, like, does it matter the order? Like, yes. Yes, is, I mean, is three is three is half is three y two. Okay, so here here's the full answer to your question. If if three is, if you don't like the way I've done it here, you have to match them up. So so meaning like this is x two and this is y two, and then nine and three becomes x one and y one. So uh -huh. the the subscripts always are in the same ordered pair, but but the order doesn't matter in the sense that like as long as you're consistent with how you label them. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Like, like you will get the same answer. We'll, we'll show it here. Um, three minus five over nine minus one. Or if you want to do it the other way, uh, five yeah. minus three over one minus nine, you do get exactly the same answer. But notice the three is above the nine. The three is above the nine. The five is above the one. The five is above the one. Is that clear? Yeah. Okay. What is the slope? Um, is it? I might have done this wrong. Uh, negative point twenty five. Yeah, I'd prefer negative one over four. Um, you want to stick? You want to stick to fractions for? Yeah. For slope. So it'd be okay, yeah. And that'd be the the slope. Yes. Okay. You seem a little uncertain about that. Uh no, I mean I'm good. I just need to remember the formula. It's not yes. That Actually, sorry, you're right. I forgot to do that. I always try to box in formulas uh for for uh, for you. Do you get a note card or Equation sheet or yeah, anything? we do get to use our like a uh, agenda with the multiplication table, so I can just write it in there. Okay. All right. Yeah, that's a good thing to have. All right. The equation y equals minus two x plus one is in slope intercept form. So one of the things I don't think students appreciate enough, and hopefully you will after you hear me say this, is that the name tells you what's in it. It has a slope and an intercept, specifically a y y intercept. Okay. Um, so the slope here is negative two and the B value is, is one. It's telling you what's in there. Now, when you graph it, you start with the B value. Uh -huh. B value there. Does that, does that something you've seen before? Yeah. Okay. So the slope though may not, you know, in the current form, it's not all that great. All that all not all that useful. If we write negative two over one though, it becomes more useful. It tells us that we're going to go down two. It's oh, always wow. to the right one. Yeah, it's always right. Could be up or down on the slope. You need two points for a line 
they often want more when they're grading these things. When you're going backwards, just make sure that from that backwards point to the point you have still follows the same slope. Sometimes they want you to use a ruler. I don't know what your teacher will want, but give them what they want. Yeah. Okay, so uh, just to get, so it, it'd be slope intercept. That's it. That's let's just ask me to graph it. Uh huh. And so it'd be just two, two down, one right. Yes. Two, one right. Yeah, okay, and that makes sense. All right, let's move to number 12. Yeah. All right, let me try to read this one carefully because it's written oddly, at least for the way I read stuff. Bookstore marks up the price of paperbacks. They purchase at $6 each by 60%. Okay. All right. So they, they purchase them for $6 and the, the sale price is obviously larger because like you wouldn't sell them anything at the price you purchased it at. It's 60% more, All right? Do you remember what you multiply by for 60% more? Um, a hundred, like 160? Uh, 1.6, 1.6. Okay, so it's it's one. One is the original amount. Mm -hmm. And then you have to convert the percentage to a decimal. So you do that by moving the decimal left two places. Oh. So what is the markup and new price of each paperback? So the, so the, if you multiply by 1.6, that will give you the new price. If you multiply just by the 0.6, that will give you the markup. So there, there's like two ways to do it. You can either figure out the markup and then add it to the original, or you can get the markup by itself and then the, the, um, new price by itself. But in both cases, you got to multiply. Yeah. So on like on the test, you could just you do the mock first and then you just Yeah, you, that's probably the way you're doing it. You're probably finding this is 3.6. And then you would say, okay, I'm going to add that to the original price to get the new price. Mm -hmm. Okay. 3.6 and 6, 9.6. Yes. And this isn't really the way it's done in real life. They Usually other techniques are used for, for pricing things. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, we can move on. Got it. 13. Determine the value for which the expression is undefined. Uh, there's only, there's a couple of rules in math. One is you're not allowed to divide by zero. Mm -hmm. So you only, you only care about the bottom. The, the top doesn't matter. You can ignore it. Where is the bottom? equal to zero for what value does a equal a equal zero uh you're solving this equation for zero
Okay, so it would have to equal like what is a for the expression to be equal to zero? Don't worry about the expression, just this equation down here. Like you 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 you've taken the bottom, the bottom is where you you want to make sure it's never zero. So you're gonna set it equal to zero. And then you're gonna solve solve for a. Like oh. I feel like I feel like 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 this is not a complicated thing now. You're just subtracting 15 from both sides. Like you know how to do this. Mm -hmm. Okay, how do you solve for a? Now at this step, what's then you divide both sides by five and get a is equal to negative three. And that's the answer. You are not allowed to divide by zero in math, programming, anything. It's mm -hmm. really, really bad. So okay. So if it if a were negative three it'd be undefined yeah okay yes yes all right we can move on all right 14 says write 0 0.0056 in uh, scientific notation all right so we're going to move decimal to the right one two three do you remember why i stopped there at 5.6 um just to have at least one uh, just to make it a whole number and not a whole number i don't know all right so here, here's the here's the reason uh so some books call it the coefficient oh, yeah it can't be higher than 10 right it's got to be between well it can be one but it but it has to be less than 10 it's called the mantissa is another name for it you might have heard um now for the exponent there are all these rules you can remember maybe you can just tell me is it three or minus three here? Um, minus, oh, no, three, three, yeah. It's It's minus three. Now, one of the ways I do it, because I don't like remembering all these rules, is is I, I know how to expand. So I, if, if, if you said it was positive three, I would look at this and think, oh, that's five, six, zero, zero, which is not, which is not the answer. I would know that that's wrong. You can remember rules, like when you move the decimal to the right, it's negative. When you move the decimal left, it's positive. Huh. I think those rules are sometimes hard to remember, but you were allowed a note sheet, right? So maybe that is something to remember here. Exponent, I'm sorry, decimal, decimal right is a negative exponent. Decimal left, is a positive exponent. The only issue I have with this is like, if they go the other way and they say like, um, if they give you something and they ask you to write it in standard form, these rules flip. Which I think why I don't like telling students the rules. Uh -huh. I think there aren't, you know, it's like when there's two rules for two different cases, it's very unclear what to do. Yeah. All right. Any uh, questions on that before we move to 16? Uh, no. Okay. Car rental company A charges $12 per day. <laughs> you guys, are, you're probably not renting a car in Japan. I don't even know if they wonder if they even do that. Why not? Yeah. Um, plus 12. 0.25 cents or 0.25 25 cents per mile. Carmel B charges $21 plus 10 cents per mile. These are so outdated. Um, you can't even get a rental car right now for like less than like, like, yeah. say like $100 a day. They're just, they're just insane. Okay. So A, A is 12 plus 0.25. Um, did we do um 15 or did I cut it out of the problem? Uh, I just didn't snip it. Can we do this one and come back to it? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Sorry. I'm uh, sometimes yeah, I do yeah. that. Just let me know. B is 21 plus 0.1 M like that. And we want to know where it's the same. So you're setting the equations equal to each other. Mm -hmm. Okay. So how do you solve an equation like this? Can you, 
you remember any any reasons that you might move something from one side to the other? Yeah, we want to get um So typically you move the smaller to the larger. So in this case you'll move the 0.1m to the right to the left because it's smaller. Mm -hmm. And and if you're comfortable, I would subtract 12 at the same time. So it's 0.15m equals 9. <clears throat> And then you divide by 0.15. Now, in terms of how you do this, you when you move the decimal to the right two times on the bottom, you have to multiply the top by 100, or you're you're set, you're effectively multiplying the top and bottom by 100. So it's 900 over 15, and that goes uh, that you'll get that that's 600 uh, for that. Yeah. So any, if you have any questions about how to do that by hand, please ask. I, I know I've gone through that quickly. Uh, um, maybe we can do some something similar to that. Sure. All right. So back to fifteen. A quick note of this one. Okay. All right, uh, write the first four terms of an arithmetic sequence where A1 is minus four and the common difference D is five. You could, you could remember the formula. The formula is AN equals A1 plus N minus one times D. Yeah, he usually uh, writes that on the board, but I'll put it. Okay. All right, so we substitute in what we know. We know that A1 is negative four. We know that D is five. We know that um, AN is the variable, meaning like N, AN is like Y, N is your variable like X. So we now have it, okay? Yeah. And, and if you're not, you don't need to simplify, you can uh, here, but you don't need to because you're just writing out the terms. So when N is one, we're finding a sub one. A sub one is minus four plus one minus one times five. One minus one is zero. Zero times five is zero. A one is negative four. And you might be like, well, we already knew that. We're just verifying the equation works. We're just making sure, okay, did it actually work? It did. N equals two. A two equals minus four plus two minus one times five. So this is one times five, negative four plus five is one. So A2 is is one. You can do it for three. A3 equals minus four plus three minus one. Five. Times five. All right. Um, so that is, um, that ends up being six. Yeah. And you might start noticing the pattern. It's plus five, plus five. That is the value of D. So if you notice that, you could have noticed it sooner. But doesn't it, I mean, it tells us and the common difference is five. Yes. So you can actually. Uh, write the, first, oh, okay, I see. So then for four, it'd be 11. For yes. A sub four, it'd be, yeah. Yes, yes. Okay. Any questions on that? Uh, no, I'm, I'm good. All right, so let's move on to we just did 15, then I, I did 16 before that, so we'll do 17. All right, ratio of men to women in an exercise class. I don't, I don't think that many men go to an exercise class. <laughs> All right, sorry, that's, that's not relevant here. <laughs> um, okay, so that whenever you see a ratio, you want to immediately look at it like this, 4x to 5x, okay? You want to add a variable, basically. You'll see these in triangle problems. You'll see them in probability problems. 
in all the classes, 27 students. So this means that 4x plus 5x equals 27. So when you solve for x, that is uh, that is um, the not the answer, but it's it's the variable that leads you to the answer. So once you find that x is three, nine x equals twenty seven x is three. You put that into the equation to get the number of men and then the number of women. So. That's up. Okay, because the score is nine and then Arizona spelled A. By that. Okay. C O N A. And then you just put it in. Yes. So 12 uh, men, 15 women. Yes. Yes. Okay. All right, 18 here. Well, it looks like we'll have some time to go through some of the, some problems again. Owners of a furniture store want to know what people think of their local, of oh, sorry, think of their store. They survey every 10th person who enters and buys something in the store. What is a possible bias for this survey? Um, the answer here is that you're sampling people that go to the store already. be like me asking you what do you think of my tutoring service you're, yeah. uh, you're kind of biased since you you're doing it every week Uh, 19. Okay. Ooh, this is tough. This is always, you know, going, you know, they're basically asking you to write the, write the question. Mm -hmm. How would you, how would you do this? So. Twenty is greater than six plus a number. How do you spell Yeah, so this is kind of the literal interpretation. Um, what I think they actually want could be a little bit different. I, I think this is okay, but they might want this. They might want you to actually look at this as X plus six less than 20 and then write it this way. A number increased by six is less than 20. They're equivalent, but you might want to check with your, what your teacher likes. Yeah. I don't know. In the past, we've done that like maybe I could change it. It might be like 20 is greater than the sum of six and x. That's right. Yeah. They, they generally don't want you to just be so literal with it, like plus. Um, and they usually want you to say a number or a number x or x is increased. You know, X increased by six is less than 20. That's like, it's almost, it's almost on like an English, English class level. All right. So we've got, um, identify statement two as the converse, inverse, contrapositive or contradiction of statement one. All right. So it's, it's, uh, it starts out with P, if P then Q. Mm -hmm. And then this is where I got to go look because I don't do uh, these very often. Converse, inverse, contrapositive. So, okay, so the converse, we start, I always start, there's an order to knowing these. You flip them. Yeah. All right. That's, that's one thing you do. Now, that, now if you want to negate them in the order they are, that's the inverse. You negate them, not P, not Q. That's the inverse. And the contrapositive is the inverse 
of the con it's the inverse of the converse. Yeah. So if if what we're looking for here is like, did they switch the order in from from one to two? They did not. They did not. So it's it's not a it's not a converse or contrapositive. But they but they only negate the second part. Like like if if statement one is p then q, statement two is p then not q. Indicate the truth value of each statement. Well, before we do that, I think that we we've had like the statement two is. I guess a contradiction of statement one. Figures square then does not have four sides. Figures square then it has four sides. It, because the what I'm trying to show you is, is the statement. Yeah. It's it's like it's none of these three, so it must be the other one. Okay, so statement two would be the inverse of statement it, one. It's for it to be an inverse, it would say if a figure is not a square then oh, it yeah, does yeah. not have four sides. So then it's just the... I think it's contradiction. Oh, okay. If, if, you're, if you're asking me, because it's none of the others. Yeah. So for statement one, we have to indicate the, the truth value. Basically, it's like this. Can you think of a counterexample? Is every... Does... does um, does it have to, I don't want to say this. Um, hmm, here. One is true, right? So. Yeah, it's it's true because the square always has four sides. Um, they're, 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 did you guys do truth tables with P's and Q's? Like. Uh True, true, false, false, true, false, true, false, like that. Does that look all familiar? I don't think we did those. Okay. We might have done it a different way. But... Yeah, I, I'm not. I'm not sure, um, because there is a scenario where if the first one is false and the second one is true, then it's false. Like this. This, this is true, true, true. The only time it's false is when the premise is false. Oh, so, okay. And I guess the, I'm getting way into stuff that you're not take, taking right now, but I, I guess I don't know how to answer this either. So go with what you think is right here. True, and then maybe false, since it's a contradiction. And indicate the true thing. Yeah, so I'm gonna go true and then false. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So then we can go back to. Yeah, so I circled a number of these, but you look, you know, we've got a limited time here. What would you like? me to give you one kind of like uh first where did you feel the weakest on um, this i would say probably 16. okay yeah the car rental company all right so let me just give you an equation to do you is was it writing the equation or solving the equation that was hard um might have been Okay. All right. A cell phone company A charges $35 for its monthly plan and 20 cents per text message. So this actually used to be the case. Believe it or not, you can ask your parents to verify that. A second company charges $45 for its monthly plan and only 15 cents for per text message. Mm -hmm. For what number of text messages is the cost the same per month?
I think what got me because it is written kind of weird, but if you just put it, I need to put it into a quiz, basically. Yes. Yes. So do you want to give that a try and let me know what you come up with? Either the equations or solving or both. Yeah. Let me try to put it in an equation. 35. So the first one would be like 35 plus a 0 0.20 T or just T because it's. Yeah, T is good. T is for text messages. Yeah, and then 45 plus 0.15 T. Okay. So then we just have to... Move the smaller variable to the larger side. The smaller so drag 0.20 T. The 0.15 is smaller. Oh, yeah. T minus then you'd end up with thirty five plus would it be point five zero five because think of it as point twenty. 0.20 minus 0.15 is equal to 45. Yes. So for, for what number of text messages that cause the same point on? You have to solve for T. Did you subtract 35 from both sides? Um, I'm doing that. Okay. So the point zero five T is equal to third or 10. Yes, yes. So this is this is maybe the hardest part here is because you, you you've got to do it by hand. Um, fast. If you asked an adult to do this by hand, they would probably rather you know do something else than divide by a decimal. But um, do you know how to do this? Do you have questions on how to do this? Uh, no, but I, I get it. Now. I just wanted to get. To okay. It. All right. What uh, we probably got time for at least one more. What else would you like a problem like from this list? I would. Say, I'd say the uh, twelve. Twelve, all right. Ah, okay. So let's uh, these word problems here. All right. Um. Ah, oh, so um, a Super Bowl ticket costs two hundred and fifty dollars face value. And a reseller wants to mark it up 40%. What is the markup? What is the new price? Actually, let me make it easier here. Let me put it, let me make it $300. It's, this is way low, I think. I actually couldn't tell you what a Super Bowl ticket costs, but let, it's probably a little low. Let's do $300. What is the markup of any price? Okay. So it would be 1.4. For the markup or the new price? Uh, 
Um, no, because you still have to multiply. I, I, I would do the markup first times the 0. 0.4. This will give you the markup. Wait, so, okay, so the 40%, you move the decimal left, uh, left to, because you're dividing it by 100. Okay. And then you would just multiply that. Yes, you get, you would get 120. The new price, you can get two ways. You can either get 300 plus the markup, which is 420. Mm -hmm. Or you can take the 300 times 1.4, which is also 4, 420. Oh, okay. Depends how you how you like to look at these these problems. So for the problem, it would just depend. Like if it was just asking for the new price, you would multiply by 1.4. Yeah. If it was only asking for the markup, you would just multiply by 0.4. When it asks for both, you kind of got to do both. Yeah. All okay. right. Well, that, yeah, that, that's going to take us to the end of our uh, lesson here for...